Well, welcome to our fifth week of Calm in the Chaos. And this week is called Choose Courage. It's taken from the story found in Matthew, 20, Matthew 14, 22 to 33. And here we see the disciples on the Sea of Galilee again. Like this is our second story where the disciples find themselves in a storm on the Sea of Galilee in the dark. I don't know why it always happens at night in the dark. That was enough to scare me. But last time in our story, Jesus was on the boat with them. He was sleeping, if you remember, but he was there with them. This time, Jesus said to the disciples, you go ahead of me, go get in the boat and go. And he went and went up the mountain to pray and be by himself. So this time he's not in the boat with him. Now this story again has so much for you and so much for me. And I can only hit the highlights, but you'll see that um, part of the story is about Peter and his boldness when he sees Jesus coming towards the boat. When he finally recognizes that it's Jesus, Peter just wants to be with him. And Peter has the faith to believe that if Jesus could do it, Jesus could give him the power to walk on water. So we do see that uh, Peter ended up starting to sink when he took his eyes off of Jesus. But the important thing is that he knew what to do when he started to sink. See, a person shows true courage, not because they never fall, but because that when they fall, they find a way to get back up. And that's what we see um, Peter doing. You know, there are a lot of reasons that um, we might feel like we're in a storm. And I don't know if this is I imagine this has happened to you, is that you get through a storm and then later in life, maybe the same year or maybe uh, another year, you find yourself in a similar storm, just like the disciples, like here they are on the sea again. And have you ever thought, now come on, I've been through this one before, do I have to do it again? Uh, in those kind of storms, whatever it is around us, that kind of chaos, we need to start getting the picture that the most important thing is not the storm outside of us, but what's going on inside of us. Matthew Henry says it this way. He says, most of our danger from outward troubles arises from the occasion they give us for inward trouble. And we all know that life is full of trouble. And even just recently, it seems like the chaos in our world, the upheaval and the uncertainty just keeps growing. But that's not the real problem. It's what is it doing to us inwardly? Is this strengthening us? Is this causing us to rely on Jesus more? Or is it sending us into despair? Is that fear overcoming us? See, if we know that Jesus is in the trouble with us, then the worst of that trouble is taken over. Like we know that he's in it with us, then we have this inner sense of well-being that really doesn't make sense. When the storm is all around us, we need to be careful that we don't blame everything on the storm, that we don't spend all of our energies trying to f figure out how to fix this chaos, that we learn not to listen to our feelings and emotions about the chaos, we need to take that chaos to God, take it to Jesus, and uh, learn to deal with our fear as he's shown us in his word. You know, when I'm in a fearful circumstance, sometimes I can let myself, my mind just dwell for a while, like trying to fix this problem, trying to find a way out of it, blaming things on the problem itself. And then all of a sudden it may just occur to me that, wait a minute, the real problem is not outside of me. The real problem is what's going on inside of me. And so when I feel fearful, I cry out to God for help, of course, but I dig into his word to find promises. I want to take control of my thoughts and quit letting my emotions rule what I think and instead start thinking and pondering God's thoughts to get off of the why God is, why is this happening and to turn it to what? God, what can I learn from this? What promise do you have for me in this situation? I love the promises of God because what he's promised, he will do. So here's a promise that deals with fear. In 2 Timothy 1.7, it says, For the spirit that God has given us does not make us timid or fearful, some of the other translations say. Instead, his spirit fills us with power, love, 
and self-control. See, when we belong to Jesus, as incredible as it sounds, His Spirit lives within us. And that's a Spirit that doesn't want us to give in to fear, to timid, timidity. Instead, His Spirit fills us with His power, with love and self-control. Um, so that's a promise. That's a gift. If you notice, God has given us a Spirit that has power love, and self-control. So in chaos, we can take control of our thoughts. We can have the power and the strength to face those things that frighten us. And we can keep um, in control, not letting our emotions control us. Another scripture that has meant a lot to me is Psalm 16, 8, where it says, I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With Him at my right hand, I shall not be shaken. So in the story in Matthew, we see that Peter was doing fine. He actually got out of the boat. He was walking on the water, even though the waves and the wind were just crashing in around him. But when he took his eyes off Jesus, he started to sink. And I think it's the same with us. If we just keep our eyes on the chaos, on the storm, it's easy to just get overwhelmed by waves of what if and if only and waves of doubt and can take us down to despair, actually. But what did, uh, what did Peter do? He looked back up to Jesus and he cried out, Help me, Lord. Now that's the best prayer ever. When you can just say, Help, Lord, help me. You know that he's right there and wants to help you. I like this because it says when he's at my right hand, He's holding on to me. I'm stable. I'm secure. I will not be shaken. And so often I just picture him holding my right hand. Well, a quote that Charles Spurgeon said about this verse has helped me a lot. It says, Satan will endeavor to keep our eyes on our sorrows that we may be discouraged. But may we firmly resolve that we will look out and look up for those who lift up their eyes to the eternal God shall soon have their hearts lifted up also. And that is so true. Um, if I resolve, like I have to make an effort to take control of my thoughts and my emotions, and I decide I'm not going to look at the storm around me, I'm going to look up. I'm going to look away from the storm and look to God. For those who lift up their eyes to God will soon have their hearts lifted up also. It's true. I've experienced it. Well, I want to share with you in closing today just a personal story. And um, I just love how God meets us where we are. He sees what we're going through. We're never out of His sight. We're, we're always on His mind, you could say. So in July of 2019, my husband Rick and I were living in Taiwan as missionaries. And and uh, Rick had a heart attack. Now that was real unexpected. He was actually a guy that really liked to get into exercise. He would ride his bike every morning, 10 or 12 miles, just loved to uh, be out and exercise, hike, ride his bike. So it was really unexpected. He was in the hospital for two weeks, though he was never conscious from that time. But you know, the aid of machines were trying to help his, his heart restore. But, um, one morning, I got this message from my friend here back in the States. And she said, Barb, this morning I was reading in Matthew 14, and it made me think of you. And she said, um, I felt like God wanted me to tell you, don't be afraid. I am here. It is I. And she said, sometimes the thing we see as scary is really Jesus in disguise. And we aren't able to see it till later. Just like the disciples, when they first saw Jesus coming, they thought it was a ghost and they were terrified. And she said to me, you know what you see, don't be afraid. This is really Jesus in disguise. And he wants us to know, don't be afraid, it is I. I received that message the Sunday morning that Jesus came and took, Jesus, and took Rick home to be with him. And that was a great day for Rick. And I don't know what in his subconscious he knew. For me, this word meant it's okay. Jesus is 
always in control, even in a situation like that. Death is not to be feared when you know, when you know you belong to Him. And the greatest day we'll ever have, each of us who belong to Him, that great day is the day we get to go home and be with Him. So today, this morning, I was um, reading the Word, and in my quiet time, God brought to mind Psalm 139. And I just want to encourage you, if you're in a situation that all you can think of is, get me out of here. How am I going to fix this? How can I get away from this? I can't stand this darkness, this chaos in my life. I hope you can take courage from this lesson in Matthew 14. But then this morning, as I read Psalm 139, came back to my heart that God orders all our days. In Psalm 139, verse 16, it says, You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. For me, because I believe in the sovereignty of God, I believe He orders all your days. I believe that no matter what happens, He's in this situation with me. Because of that strong belief I have in His sovereignty, I really can experience a deep down, unsettled, unshakable sense of peace, a sense of well-being, even if I don't like what's going on around me. That's true peace. And that's what I want for you. That's what Jesus says is His gift to each of us. So I encourage you to keep clinging to the Lord, look away from your trouble, look up to Jesus, call out for help, dig into His Word and find His promises for you and trust that each day of your life has been ordered by your Father who loves you. So thanks for doing this study with me. Next week is week six. It'll be our last week and we're going to look at choose to commit, to keep our lives, our heart committed to Him. Thanks for joining me.